Today we have another powerful lesson uh, as we begin a new year. And I was led by the Holy Spirit to talk about a new beginning with a new heart. And the scripture will be Psalms 51, verses 1 through 12. Before I start, let me offer the altar prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I thank you because you have kept us from one year until this year. Father, I thank you because you hid us in the secret place of your tabernacle. You have kept your loving arms around us. You have comforted us in the midst of trying time. You have guided our footsteps. And Father, you gave your son to die on the cross for us, and that is your mercy, all undergirded by love. But Father, I come and make an intercessory prayer on the behalf of so many who have so many issues or adversities or situations that's going on in their lives at this time. But Father, we know that you are a comforter. We know that you are a healer. And Father, all of those who need a, a healing, we ask that you heal right now, Father, because you are the doctor and you can administer the perfect medication. And Father, you know what each and every one of us needs. And you love us all the same because you are no respected person. And what you do for one, you will certainly do for another. And I thank you. And then Father, you are the comforter. And you said in your words, and if I can quote Psalms 23 and 4, they said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And Father, we know that you are with us because your word said so. And we also know that you are true to your word. And Father, I'm just asking for comfort for all of those who need your comfort. Father, we need your love and protection, and you give it so graciously, and we thank you. And Father, as we go through this year, we see the pandemic is still raging. But Father, we are asking for your deliverance. We are thanking you for it and believing that it will, that you will deliver us, because again, you're true to your word. And Father, as we go about our daily tasks, we continue to thank you for your grace because it is sufficient and your mercy suits every case that we may have. And then Father, we are, we are asking for just a little more love in our hearts. Father, I'm asking you to touch the minds and the hearts of men that they may turn back to you. And Father, we are asking that uh, you continue to look upon us as we go about our daily tasks and as we progress, anticipate seeing the end of this year. Lord, we just thank you so much in advance for answering this prayer as we are praying it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Good morning, good morning. I was beginning to read the scripture. It's been acting out all morning, but okay. And our scripture text is coming from, we don't have communion this morning. Okay, we'll give a minute to get there. As I read our scripture verses, the reading from Psalms 51 verses 1 through 12, it reads as follows. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities and cleanse me from thy sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sins are ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speak and be clear when thou judge. Behold, I was shapen in iniquities, and in my sins did my mother conceive me. Behold, the desire, the truth, 
in thy inmost parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide not thy face from me, from my sins, and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Uphold me with thy right hand. And my focus scripture is going to be verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And as I said, the Lord laid on my heart to talk about a new beginning with a new heart. Because we are beginning a new year. And so many of us make New Year's resolutions as a new promise or a new commitment. Some are kept, some not so much. And what we are committing to, so many popular with that, we're committing themselves, people are committing themselves to start something new, continue doing something they had started prior to the, the, the new year. And many of those with New Year's resolution consist of eating healthier, combining with the weight loss exercise, whether it's joining a gym or fitness center, or beginning a walking regimen, or just to simply lose weight. weight. Uh, some resolutions are components into that already weight loss fight. But I, these questions came to my mind, and I'm not being judgmental, but it's just something to ponder as we start a new year with a new heart and saying we want to get a little closer to God. So the questions that I was asking, I'm asking, how many of us, we made our New Year's resolution, uh, asking God to create in us a new heart and give us a renewed spirit so that we might walk closer with him. Have we have committed ourselves to establishing a closer walk with him and to grow in his knowledge and his grace? Then have we asked ourselves, do I have the committed desire to grow deeper in his knowledge? and in his love, and to love him more in return for his love for us. How many of us have acknowledged, in fact, that the more I increase in God's knowledge, that I'm better able to do his will and answer his call, uh, being ambassadors for Christ and answering his call to whatever the ministry he has called us to? because he chose us, we didn't choose him. Then uh, the other question is, have we committed ourselves, as we who are believers in Christ, to be led by the Holy Spirit who lives in every believer? And have we cried out and thanked God for his love and grace and knowledge and mercy? This is what we see that David was doing in his prayer when he was asking him, creating him a new heart, give him a renewed spirit and a right spirit, one that will keep him from sinning or help him to keep from sinning. But one thing about David, when he did wrong, he was uh, humble enough to go to God and ask for forgiveness. David realized that there was a need for improvement in, her, in his life, and he cried out for mercy as he recognized the fact that his sin was against God. And we likewise, when we may, it may affect another, our fellow man, but it, it, it is against God. God is a righteous God. And sin, 
he does not like sin. So that applies and what David's attitude applies to us and we are encouraged when we sin to go to God and ask for forgiveness because he is willing to forgive us for our sins. And then we see in David that I said we could apply for to our lives. He wanted God's mercy upon him according to not David's mercy or my mercy, but according to God's mercy and his love and kindness. And he was asking him to blot out his sins because he know that we know that God does that. And as I said, we, as perfect as we try to be, we are still imperfect people, but we are serving a perfect God who is willing to forgive us and have mercy upon us. Therefore, when we say we sin, when we sin, whether it's unknowingly, we must humble ourselves and go to God and ask him for forgiveness. And in doing some of those things, we, like David, wanted a clean heart so that we could have a renewed spirit and to better serve God because he would have already washed us whiter than snow. That was David's plea. And the other thing that, I, I, that I'm seeing here and I want to point out that David wanted to, and he had a greater desire to feel the joy of a closer walk with God. And he wanted this joy so bad and so deep. He wanted it to be down in the deep part model as his bones. And we're looking at my, the new year and talking about a new beginning. We all have room for improvement. We all have room for growth and our love and our knowledge and our grace and, and, and being in fellowship with God. And this is what we are, I'm asking now. And did we include God in our New Year's resolution? What part is he in our New Year's resolution? Does uh, we ask, we are incorporating him in our New Year's resolution to have to spend some daily quality time with God in prayer and scripture reading and meditating on his word then in our daily lives, are we committing ourselves to have a heart of love, one that will manifest the love and the righteousness of our Savior, Jesus Christ? And then as another commitment in our daily walk is to let our light shine just a little brighter so the world, because this world is darkened with sin, we'll see the righteousness of Christ in our lives. And as we go about our daily lives, have we committed ourselves or have we recommitted or rededicated ourselves to witness Christ? Because we have the opportunity. We can witness Christ without saying a word. We can witness Christ just through our demeanor or how we carry ourselves. Yes, but I'm not saying we have to be all stuffed shirt because no, that's not that what I'm saying. We have a loving smile on our face and we're going to encounter people who does is not like us. And when I'm saying not like us, not I'm not talking about color or gender. I'm talking about in our spiritual life. Some is not going to be in the same uh, spiritual growth stages we are, but we still love them when we say hello or uh, God loves you or I love you with the love of God. In other words, all I'm saying is that we have recommitted ourselves to find where we need to grow to being a better Christian and showing the world God love, the love of God, because we love all of our neighbors or our fellow man with the love of God, because that's part of the one of the commandments, the second commandment, that we are to love the, our neighbor as ourselves. We are to love God with our total being. These are some of the commitments of a renewed spiritual commitment that in, we are having in this new, we are putting in our New Year's resolution is all I'm trying to say, because uh, we must get back or get a, a renewed spirit. Because the reason I'm saying this is because the world is in chaos. 
it is so evil and we see it on every in every manner and every walk of life we see so much hatred and that is not of god and am i making a judgment no i'm not I, i'm being judgmental i'm just saying what i see and that we know that uh somehow uh the world have taken god out of it uh, it made it him not our priority and we can look at the nation of israel when they made god their first for the first law, they was blessed beyond measure. And that same principle applies to us today because one thing about God, he's the same today as he was yesterday, and he's no respected person. He loves us all the same. And what he does for one, he will certainly do for the other. He uh, protect us, he will bless us, and then he will chastise us when we do wrong or go wrong or get out of his will, get out of his will. And that's why it is so important that we stay connected to him and through prayer, daily scripture reading, and then meditating on the word. Some of them, you're not gonna, the scriptures you may not understand, but we have the indwelling Holy Spirit who will interpret what God is saying to us in his word. And as we go about our daily lives and our renewed commitment to him and doing all the good that we can for as many people as we can and for as long as we can, this is an exhibition of our faith at work because we know that in James, he talks about a dead faith, a faith without works is dead. And we want our faith to be alive. And we don't have to have much faith. And it said, you can start with the faith the size of a mustard seed. And as we grow in our spiritual life, our faith will grow and it increase. And, and as I said earlier, in our prayer life, in our faith, we want to thank God through prayer daily because when we give God praise, blessings come down. And why do we want to continuously thank him as we praying to him? Not always asking him for something, just spend some time thanking him, thanking him for life in itself because without him, there is no life. Because he is the essence of our being from the beginning to the end. He's the one that wakes us up early in the morning. He's the one that gives us the activities of our land. He is the one indirectly through our jobs give us the basic needs that we have and to sustain this physical life. And in his spiritual life, he sustains us through his word and our prayer. He gives us the comfort we need when situations comes upon us that will cause us to want to worry or cause us to have anxiety. But he took care of that. He told us in his word, don't you worry about anything. I want you to take and bring all of your cares to me. Just give them to me. And how do we do that? We do that through prayer. And then ask him through the, the Holy Spirit to help us to leave our situation with him. And I can tell you from a personal experience, I had to grow to the point that when am I going to pray about a situation, then don't worry about it. Because when we do that, then we are not trusting our prayers and we don't believe that God will hear and answer our prayers. But let me just reassure you this morning that he hears. And he certainly answers prayers. Now, he may not answer right then, but he certainly answers prayer. It may take him a minute because he knows more about us than we do. And he might say, well, I let me just have you wait because I am going to get you ready for what you've asked me for. And then it may not come like we ask, but it will come. He does answer his prayer. I'm a living witness to that fact. And then as we are growing in our spiritual walk, 
we begin to trust him more as we have an assurance of he will deliver us from all of our situation. And I know that our current situation is ever before us on in our minds. But my prayer is, and then I encourage all of us to just to pray and ask God for his deliverance as we believe in that he will. Then ask him for his protection around us as we go about our daily lives, we are fighting with an enemy that we cannot see, we cannot taste it, nor can we smell it. We just know it when it hits. But we serve an almighty God who is supreme, he's all knowing, and he's all powerful. And he's in control, whether the world make us think that he's not, but he is. And he is gonna deliver us from all these situations. And there's a scripture that John uh, and James, when he said, in all these, we find ourselves in situation, to count it all joy. And why he wants us to count it just joy is because that we have to have, it's gonna teach us patience and belief in God and his deliverance. Then we can, when we focus on God, instead of the situation, we will find peace and we will find joy. Because let me remind you of the scripture when there was Jesus was down in the boat resting during his earthly ministry, there came up a storm, and the, all him and his shipmates was about to perish. And someone ran down in the hull of the boat to get wake up Jesus. And he came up and asked him where was their faith. But he spoke to the wind and the waves, and all he said was, peace be still. And what I'm trying to say to you today, as part of our New Year's spiritual resolution, as we incorporate Christ in our life. Yes, we're going to have situations. We're going to encounter situations. But give it to him and let him say, speak peace, be still. And he, we will get a calmness that will come over our lives. Yes, the situation may be, be there, but it will not have the devastating effect in the world ratio had we not given it to Jesus and let him say, peace, be still. Then the other thing I want to say is this. In our renewed commitment or renewed spiritual resolution is heeding the voice of the indwelling Holy Spirit. He's that small, soft voice that speaks to our hearts, speaks to our minds. And as we grow in Christ, in the knowledge and the grace of Christ, we'll begin to hear that the voice clearer speaking to us. And we will be able to let our light shine just brighter and brighter and brighter because we will have yielded control of our lives over to the Holy Spirit who is our heavenly compass. He's our teacher and he's our God. And he gives us directions. And the other point that I wanna make here is this, having the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit we as believers can boldly witness Christ to a lost world. So they too will come to Christ and be saved. Some is not gonna always say that as we witness, don't get discouraged as many will not adhere to the word, but there is so many that is coming to Christ as the word is preached or as the word is taught or as witnessing uh, from our witnessing Christ to in our daily lives, 
And I get these reports all the time that so many people is coming by the droves to Christ through witnessing. And then as in our witnessing through words and our lifestyle, we all who come to Christ will be new, new converts and will have a heart, a new heart, because as recorded in Ezekiel 36, 26, when God promises to give them a new heart, I put a new spirit in them. He will remove the heart of hatred, strife, bigotry, and all other evilness and give them one of love, compassion, care, and kindness. This is a new heart. And we have, he will have replaced it. And this is what the world is supposed to be working on is love because love and hate cannot reside in the same house. You're either going to love one or you're going to hate one. Now, then in having a new heart, we will have the long suffering. We will can manifest the fruits of the spirit and which is that we've talked about compassion, love, kindness, long-suffering, patience, and joy. And this is known after as a, a heart of flesh, which is a pattern uh, of God. So as I kind of bring this message to a close, in making our New Year's resolution, let me encourage you once again, include God. And this is a new beginning. And we want to have new growth. Including God in our New Year's spiritual resolution. We are thanking him for where he has brought us from. How he has kept us safe in his sanctuary. We thank him that through all of the trials and tribulations that we have encountered, and we'll continue to encounter. He's always there with us and will continue to be with us regardless of what the situation is because he's true to his word when he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he will speak peace to the troubled waters of our lives. God as part of our new year's spiritual revolution there will be a spiritual reawakening in our lives to the point that we are desire, have a desire for him and to be in his, his presence as we thank him for his love, his grace, and his mercy. And as we, who is believers, continue to witness Christ and let our light shine brighter and brighter and new converts come into the, the kingdom of God, to come into the family of God, become adopted sons and daughters of God, they too will have a renewed spirit. They too will have a heart of love. And this will have a pebble effect. It will spread like a wildfire. And pretty soon we will have a healing of the nation we will have that will be a new joy that is spread across the nation and the world. It will become worldwide. See, God's word is going to come to pass because his word is true and there is no failure in him. Then too, if we wonder, how am I gonna keep all this, my New Year's resolution, where it's part of the, whether it's part of the, the our everyday uh, gym fitness or our walk with Christ, we have a helper. We have the help of the Holy Spirit to so help us remain committed to this new way of life, as I said, whether we have recommitted ourselves just to be healthier in our physical life and to be healthier in our spiritual life. 
we have help. We're not alone because if we were, there would be a failure in God and there is no failure in him. And he will keep us strong and doing and being committed to our New Year's resolution. Because where well, we get weak and we in our humanness, we will get weak, but we have the strength of God, the Holy Spirit. He is strong. And one other thing that we can account on, that his grace is sufficient and his mercy suits any case. This is what he told Paul when Paul was asking him to remove the thorn out of his flesh. He just politely told Paul, my grace is sufficient and my mercy suits the case. What was he telling Paul? Paul, don't worry about your affliction. Focus on me, because I got you. I will give you that extra strength that you need to go the extra mile. And whatever it is situation is, I got it. And my mercy suits it. I will give you mercy. I can take away the pain or I can ease the pain, but just carry on and, and you'll call it. We see that Paul did just that. So what am I saying? I'll repeat, God is the same today as he was yesterday. And in our affliction or in our adversities, just know this, that God's grace is sufficient and his mercy suits the case. Now you say, okay, well, what is his mercy? Well, how bad the situation may get be, it could be worse and thinking that it's no worse than it is. Then you thank him for giving us patience and the strength to lean on his everlasting arm as he carry us through the situation because there is an end to the situation. And if we can reflect on the nation of Israel, when they were in bondage, he delivered them. And when they fed, he fed them, he took care of them during their wilderness journey. He fed them manna from heaven. They didn't have to try to work for it. They just had to go gather it every day, fresh. And he gave them the water that they needed from a rock. And their shoes and clothes lasted their entire 40 year journey. God's grace and mercy. He's doing the same thing for us today because he's the same God and he loves us all and he will continue to do for each and every one of us. He will supply all of our needs, all of our needs. And if you needed a house, he supplied it. If you needed a job, he supplied it. If you need food, he supplies it. And when you need a closer walk with him, he's right there saying, come on, my child. Let me take you by the hand and I'll carry you to the end of this journey. And I want to say this. If we are in Christ, there is no harm in renewing our covenant vows with Christ, a renewed commitment. It's like a marriage. And you notice that every so often, of so many years of a couple's marriage, they will renew their vows. Some of them even go through the entire marriage ceremony. And if I can equate this to us, we have our revival uh, usually twice a year. That is just to have a reawakening of our commitment and our spiritual walk with Christ. Because with the, uh, the mundane uh, task of daily life, well, sometimes if we allow it, uh, become dull and we don't want to do that. But that's why I, I strongly encourage us to always have 
a daily time with Christ through prayer and scripture reading. And because that is establishing a strong bond of relationship with him. And yes, we want that relationship so we can always talk to God. Then we are establishing an intimate friend relationship. And I know many of us have heard that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. There's no better friend than Jesus. Now, and I'm preparing to close that. In establishing our renewed spiritual New Year's resolution, include God in it because that's a renewed commitment. And if you're out of Christ, add him to it, whatever resolution you've made for this year. And if you're out of Christ, I have I have made up my mind that I'm going to turn my life over to Christ and walk with him because there is going to come a time this earthly physical life is going to end and I, had, I need a permanent home for to spend eternity. And I'd rather spend it in Christ than out of Christ. And if we are out of Christ and accepting him, we will have a new heart. We will, and that will be a new beginning, like a new year, because we are bathed in Christ and we are coming to him as a new person. We have a heart that's one of love, goodness, kindness, compassion, and joy. And as a close, I open the doors of the church. If you're here and want to join, put your name on the roll of this church. We're going to preach and teach and live Christ. So there's no better than him. And in doing so, we would have made a new start in life. The doors of the church are open. If you're here, you can give us your name, because we are going to do, I'm going to do communion. Yeah. Okay, if you don't have the uh, communion bread, get you, I'll give you a minute to get you some bread or some water, just a piece, and uh, some juice or a cracker. And I'm going to do the, uh, the scripture for the communion. Oh, I got it. You waiting on me? Well, I'm opening my my thing here. Oh. Uh, oh, let me get this bread out of here. Okay. All right. The scripture reads as follows. I'm ready. Ooh. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And they did eat the bread. Oh, boy. Okay. okay. And at the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my body, in my blood. Do this as often as you drink, do it in remembrance of me. And they did eat and drank the cup. to drank the juice. Mm. Okay, let me close with our closing song. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again.